This is Twit. Back to the phones we go. Line two, James Round Rock, Texas. Hello, James. Hello, Leo. Perfect. So Red Rocker to Round Rock. Hello, James. What can I do for you? First, well, Leo, a uh, long-time tech geek, first-time caller, so thanks nice. for all you do. Thank you. Um, <laughs> well, I've got a, a bunch of kids, my wife and I, and we... So there's more than tech in your life. Video. I like that. You're well-rounded. <laughs> So we've got like nine boys. So we record a lot of basketball, a lot of football. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> nine? <laughs> yeah. When do you have time for tech? We got, we got a girl too. Oh, oh my goodness! I mean, okay, yeah. you're an overachiever. You have to have efficiency. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, good for you. So, thanks. Well, so you know we record a lot of videos, and so I've actually gotten to the Apple Jail, where I exceeded the two terabyte. And I'm out of options on what to do with all this stuff. So I Wait don't a minute. You have more than two terabytes in the cloud? Yes. So you've ex you got to the top of the – you can't buy any more iCloud. Yes. Holy cow. <laughs> so generally speaking, when it's – when uh, the reason Apple tops off at two terabytes, truthfully, Microsoft considers one terabyte unlimited storage. So two – is you really are an overachiever. Um, good for you. That stuff is safe in iCloud. Um, but honestly, um, you know, this the time to upload it must have you must have been doing this for years. Yeah, it's built up and uh, I've got a, a Synology NAS drive. Oh good. I was thinking about starting to move stuff over there. But I also want to try to keep it to where I can still access everything. And of course, you know, your golden rule about back Backing up off-site right. and on-site as well so, so that we keep everything secure. Y so you're now, you're now kind of enterprise grade here. <laughs> you, you, you moved out of the, the home server to the enterprise grade server. So uh, yeah. in terms of backup, yeah, absolutely. You want, uh, you know, you always want, if you can, three copies, the original plus two backups. And one of those backups should be up there in the cloud, right? Uh, reason being, if you get, uh, you know, your premises get destroyed uh, by 10 children or whatever, uh, then you've got another copy that's safe in the cloud. However, in the cloud can mean a variety of things. And now you're at this enterprise grade, you, you need to learn about some of the different choices. For instance, one way to do, uh, it's really not in the cloud, it's off-site is what we should say, really, which means, for instance, you could have duplicate Synologies and put one at work and one at home. And the Synology, like many NASes, will actually replicate one to the other. If if your NAS or your backups don't do that, you can teach it to do that with programs like RSync. And so because they'll be in sync, you'll have a duplicate that's at the office that's off-site. So that would count as in the cloud. And when it's when you have that much storage, I think that's more practical because, for instance, you can copy locally to that Synology, copy it to a second one, bring it to work, and now the synchronization will only copy the changes, right? So you don't use a lot of bandwidth. It's not going to take a lot of time. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of cloud um, providers now offer that kind of hard drive. Um, you know, one of our sponsors, Wasabi, they call it the Wasabi Ball, uh, but Carbonite, another sponsor, does the same thing where they send you a big drive, and you, if you've got lots of storage to bet to put in the cloud they'll send you a drive you put it on there locally at a high speed and then mail it to them it turns out actually this is one of the insights that uh reed hastings the founder of uh, netflix had he was in a college class a computer science class and the professor asked an interesting question what has more bandwidth uh fiber strand across the country or a truck carrying a hundred thousand dvds and uh even though the truck's slower it's carrying a lot more data it might have more bandwidth so that's, by the way, why he started Netflix and was sending DVDs through the mail for so long. Uh, bandwidth has increased, so he doesn't have to do that anymore. So uh, honestly, sometimes sneaker net or physically moving drives works. The other thing you should know about, for you said you want your stuff uh, readily available. There's, there's, there's kind of three kind of categories in, a, in the enterprise of storage. There's online, which is stuff that you can you know, open up your desktop and see. There's near line, which means you can mount a drive that's next to your computer and it's there. And then there's offline. So there is Amazon, among others, offer something called Glacier. 
Amazon Glacier is storage for stuff that you don't need right away. So it's like, well, I got pictures of the kids from the first five years. I'm probably not going to access that anytime soon. Glacier is very cheap storage, but it's slow to retrieve because you have to request it. They have to go. I don't know what they do. They go get it and they then make it available to you. So Glacier's cheap long-term storage for stuff you don't want. That's offline. So online, nearline, and offline. And it's probably a good idea to start thinking about, well, you have two terabytes. How much of this stuff do you really need access to in an online or nearline state? And how much of it could be offline in, in Glacier or somewhere like that? And all of this is really to reduce your cost. Two terabytes of uh, iCloud is how much, a, how much a month is that? That's a lot, right? Uh, not too bad. It's like 10 a month. But now I've had to get Dropbox to offload videos because I'm out of space. So yeah, i got to figure something out. <laughs> yeah, they, they, I don't think they ever contemplated anybody would want more than two terabytes. At, no, at that they point, didn't, you, they didn't plan on me. No, but it's a consumer service. It's, see, you're now, like I said, you're not a consumer anymore. You're, a, you're, you're enterprise grade, baby. Um, <laughs> Dr. Mom says she uses Glacier to back up her Synology every night. Costs her 60 cents a month. But the thing oh, to remember... Yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah, it's cheap. Glacier's cheap. I do the same thing. But the good thing to remember is if you have to get the data from Glacier, it's going to take, yeah, they say, like five hours. It's, a, it's not like it's going to take a week. But it's not Im immediately available. And the idea, I think, no. as much as anything, is to discourage you from accessing a lot. So the Glacier kind of says what it is. It's frozen. Frozen data. So this is where you have to kind of start. Now you kind of have to start doing some pencil and paper planning and think about what do I, how much of this data do I need right away? How much? Now, you're, how big is your NAS? A NAS, for folks who are listening, wondering what that acronym is, stands for Network Attached Storage. It's a massive hard drive that is actually a computer. It just doesn't have a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. It's on your network, and it often has many terabytes. My, my, my Synology NAS, Synology is a brand name we like a lot. I, obviously, you do too. Uh, my Synology NAS has something like 10 terabytes, much more than my iCloud. So that would be another option is to get a second Synology and have them replicate to one to the other. They do that automatically. Okay. Yeah, I'm at two terabytes. Uh, drives in the NAS. I was thinking of upgrading those or going to a five bay. So that was another option. Yeah, I use a five bay uh, Synology. One of the advantages of a NAS is typically the massive storage is not on one drive, but on multiple drives using RAID. And that means if one drive fails, you don't lose data. It can rebuild itself. It's got redundancy built in. With a five drive Synology, I actually have, I think, all two terabyte drives in there. And RAID typically takes, you know, one drive RAID takes maybe a third of that. You can do two drive RAID, which means up to two drives can fail simultaneously. Then your data is super safe. But again, if it's on premises, the real risk is a fire or theft or something that everything's gone. So you do need so offsite. With, with the, so would the five bay allow for me to swap out drives so I can have one in the car? Uh, that's, no, that's what I used to do. No, no. yeah, no, no. Those drive, that's an array. They all go together. You can take that drive out. But you need to put another drive in, and then it's going to go through a period of rebuilding. It's not like, oh, hey, let me just take one of them with me. No. <laughs> it's not designed for that. No. Uh, but, okay. yeah. I think that you, you get the outline of what you need to do. I would say that probably iCloud is not economical for you if you're storing that much up there. And, obviously, it's not big enough for you. Your NAS is your friend because you can get massive storage on NASes. Uh, if you have a five-drive NAS and you have two terabyte drives in there you're going to get maybe a little more than eight terabytes of storage that's probably enough even for you what do you have a terabyte per kid what's going on well we've got uh, all the movies we bought i uh, moved them over into the cloud ah you're storing movies yeah devices. yeah nowadays so maybe less economical to to rip your movies just watch them stream them watch them on the on the internet i think it's got a lot of people doing that